Hi guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Riley. I'm a licensed cosmetologist in the state of California. And if you don't follow me on Instagram, I'm gonna leave it right down here. You can follow me there to keep up with me on all things hair. So today I'm gonna be doing a Q&A. As you guys know, I do these every couple months. They're super fun to connect with you guys and just to answer some of the questions you guys have. So a lot of these I pulled off of an Instagram Q&A that I did a few weeks ago and I just never actually answered the question. So I just screenshotted them and I'm gonna be answering those and then also a few of these I got in YouTube comments so literally I've just been making a big long list and I'm just gonna answer some of them for you today so the first question is what do you think is the best and the worst hair trend so something I have been loving in the industry lately is warm tones and lived in hair I feel like it was a big thing back in the day to be like an eight-week highlight client you have to come in every eight weeks in order for your hair to look good and that's just not a thing anymore now people want to come three times a year maybe four times a year. I feel like it's way more common to have your hair be lived in. Just the lived in styles, looking super effortless and beachy. That is definitely a trend right now that I've been loving. And to go along with that, the worst hair trend is a little bit controversial. And I posted a TikTok. If you want to follow me on TikTok, I'll leave it on the screen. People came at me on TikTok, but I just don't really enjoy the curtain bang trend. It looks great on some people, but I just feel like everybody has them. I don't know. I don't love them. I don't hate how they look. I just don't like how everybody has them. Like everybody has the same haircut and it doesn't work for everyone. That's the thing. All hair colors don't work for everybody. I don't know. I just don't love curtain bangs, but that is my opinion and everybody's entitled to their own. <laughs> okay, so the next question is how to handle a complaint. I feel like there's multiple levels to getting a complaint and I would be lying if I said I never got one. So I think it's important to establish what the complaint is and why you're getting it. Most of the time people get complaints because there was something wrong in the consultation. So that is why having a super thorough consultation is really important. So actually a couple weeks ago I got a complaint that my client didn't feel light enough. It was the first time I had ever done her hair. Her hair was like a level three when she came in so it was pretty dark. I feel like I just didn't explain thoroughly enough that it would need multiple sessions to get to where she wanted to be. But I did say that it's just harder to take it and hear it it when it's not what you want to hear as the client. So I did have to explain to her, it's not necessarily my fault that I couldn't get your hair light enough. I did everything I could. I still wanted you to have hair on your head, but I would love to take you lighter in a couple weeks when your hair is healthy enough to do so. So that is how I handled that complaint. Obviously they say that the customer or the client is always right, but I feel like it's just important to evaluate the situation and just do what's best for you and what you think is best for your business. Sometimes people just aren't a great fit for you and that's okay. That one's really hard because obviously we're not God, we can't do everything. But at the same time, you are a business owner. This is your job. You do want to step up and deliver. So there is a very fine line. The next question I got is, do you see yourself opening a salon one day or what are your goals for the future? So as you guys know, I am 21. Maybe you didn't know that, but yes, I'm 21. I have been licensed for almost three years. Honestly, I don't know what my plans are. I really do want to open my own salon and I think I want it. I'm not even going to say what I want it to be because number one, things could change. Also, I don't want people to steal my glory. But like I said, I am only 21. I don't even know what everything that I want is yet. But what I do know that I want is everything to be exactly how I want it. I don't want to have to worry about money and compromising where I need to because I'm short money. I don't think it's in the future anytime soon. Yes, I do see myself opening opening a salon one day. When? No idea. What it will be? No idea. I just don't know how I can make a decision that big when I'm just so young. Okay, the next question I got is how did you get into hair and is it something you knew you wanted to do forever? This is kind of a complicated and long story. When I was in high school, I was always the girl who did people's hair. I would be doing people's hair for dances. I was just kind of always the girl who could braid. I was wearing my hair in braids every day. I would curl my hair. I was just the girl who did hair. When my senior year came around and I was thinking, okay, do I want to go to community college? One of my family friends came up to me and was like, oh my gosh, look at this program. This will be a great opportunity for you. Like I can help you. And I was like, I don't know. Like, I don't know if my parents will let me. I was thinking hairstylists don't make a lot of money, which obviously 
I was very wrong about but obviously hairstylists have that stigma of like they don't really make money They don't really get anywhere. So I understand why my family was hesitant, but I did it I went for it. I did so good in school I was so proud of myself and then now I am working in a really beautiful salon So things are really great. Obviously I got into hair basically from a family friend She kind of gave me the push to do it I think she just always knew that it was something I wanted to do and that I would be good at it So I'm very grateful for her. I tell her that all the time that I would never be where I am without her. That's how I got into hair. The next question is how to make it through beauty school and tips for beauty school students. I do want to make a whole video on this because I just had a client who was in beauty school and I just wanted to like wrap my hands around her and be like, it's okay. Like you're going to get through it. I'm going to be frank with you guys. Beauty school kind of sucks. It's not fun. There's a lot of drama. You're not really learning anything that you want to learn. You probably feel like you're not learning anything at all. So I feel like how I made it through beauty school is I took it really serious. Honestly, it was really important important to me. I knew I was going to school to make this a career, to make this my passion for life. I gave it my all. I studied. I worked on doll heads. I kept really busy. Honestly, I think I took it the most serious out of everybody that I went to school with just because I knew I wanted something out of it and I knew I was going to have to work to do that. So if I have any tips for you at all, and I always tell people this, take it seriously. You're not there to make friends. Unfortunately, you're not there to have a lifelong experience and oh my gosh, this is so great. Just get through it and just do your best. It's honestly worth it to put yourself through a year, six months, whatever it is of just really hard work and focus to get what you want out of it. I could do a whole video on like beauty school tips if that's something you guys want to see or if you are in beauty school and you need any other advice just leave it in the comments below and I will make a big list of everything that I need to make a video on. Okay and my last question is thoughts on state board passing new regulations. This one is a good one and I actually put like a little question box about how people felt about it on my Instagram story and then I feel like it got really heated so I decided to take it off. If you guys haven't heard, State Board just released hours in California so instead of 1,600, you now just have to get 1,000 which in my opinion is absolutely crazy. I went to school for more than 1600 hours and I graduated literally knowing nothing. I feel bad for them honestly because they're getting their education taken away from them. I can't wrap my head around the fact that they're going to cut it 600 hours and expect people to feel prepared. Along with that they also took out the practical. I know a lot of states actually don't have practicals and I kind of just feel whatever about that. It really does suck that I had to do that because that was the most stressful thing. I don't know. I'm just more shocked that they cut the hours honestly. So that wraps up my Q&A for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you have any other questions you want me to answer just leave them down below and I will answer them in the comments. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram. I'll leave it right here and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.